Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create artificial light bursts like this, which can add drama to your photos, but also enhance an existing light source that you may have in your photos. And it's relatively simple to do as well. So let's get started. Okay, let's get into it. To create the flare, we're going to need to create a new layer. And then we're going to want to select the brush tool, which I already have selected. Now we're going to want to make sure that our foreground color is white and that we are using a soft brush. So if we right click on the image, we will bring up the brush menus and we're going to make sure that this hardness is set to zero. So the brush is the softest it can be. And hit escape there. Now we're going to comprise the flare of two different layers. We're going to comprise it of a core and a glow. So for this layer, which we're going to call core, so we should rename this layer core. With our big soft brush, we're going to click once. And then this will be the core of our flare. Now for the glow, we just need to duplicate this layer. So if we hit Command J or Control J if you have a PC, we have now duplicated this layer, which we're going to be calling glow. Now the glow is going to be bigger than the core. So we're going to need to free transform this glow layer by hitting Command T for the free transforms options. Now when we're in free transform, if you just default move it around, it's, it's not going to look right because we're going to want the flare to expand from the center. So if we just come out of that and we'll go back into Control T again for free transform, we're going to want to hold Alt and Shift. And then now when we drag, it's going to expand and grow from the center point. So the center point will remain intact and you can just grow it from the center. So choose a relatively good size for your glow, of say around about there. And we're going to hit OK. So this is our basically our flare created. But at the moment it's white. So we're going to need to add some colour to this. So to do this, we're going to click on our core. And we're going to choose a hue saturation adjustment level. Adjustment layer, sorry. Now within this adjustment layer properties for the hue saturation, we're going to click the colorize option. And then now this means that the whole colour, the whole image, can be altered in colour by moving the hue slider. So we're going to want to choose a nice orangey yellow colour for the flare as we've got a sunset in this image. So let's say around about that. And we're not going to mess around with the, the lightness and saturation just yet. We shall get onto that in a moment. So if we just escape out of that, we're going to want to duplicate this hue saturation layer. So we'll have one affecting the glow. So if we hit Command J on that, we now have two hue saturation layers. So we're going to want to move this one above the glow because we want this one to only affect the glow. But at the moment, the adjustment is affecting the whole image. So all we need to do, we need to create a clipping mask for both of these glow layers. So these adjustments will only affect the brush stroke for the glow. To create a clipping mask, it's simple as going over to the layer here, holding Alt, and then you get this little box with a downwards arrow. This means to create a clipping mask. So if we click once there, that has now created a clipping mask. So that hue saturation layer there is only affecting this layer here. And if we do the same to this one, hold Alt and click. So these now two hue saturation layers are only affecting the two flare layers. Now the reason why I said not to touch the hue, the lightness and the saturation options just yet is because we're going to want to amend the blending layer of the flare to make it the overall result more realistic looking. So at the moment we are on normal. So if we click on our glow there and we're going to change the blending mode to linear dodge, which is what I find to be the best option to make the flare look more realistic. And then we're going to want to change the cause of linear dodge as well. So now we have the linear dodge blending mode selected, we can go back into our hue saturation layer. So double clicking on the, the layer adjustment options there to bring back up our adjustment box. Now to bring some color through, all we're going to have to do is just drop the lightness. And you can't see it very well. If I disable this glow layer, you can see that by bringing the lightness down, we are bringing the color through on our flare. So we're going to want to choose around about there and possibly pump up the saturation a touch. And that's fine. 
So if we disable this layer and then go back to our glow and do the same thing, just choose a color, a lightness that suits the image. About there will do. Pump up the saturation a touch. And there we go. Now if we just activate this core again, now we have our finished glow. So if we go into shift click these together and hit command G to group them, and then we can use our move tool to move the flare around. Now you may think, oh that's a bit too strong of an effect. To get around this, because we're on linear dodge, we can go back to the glow layer and opacity will just make the flare less transparent. But the fill option, because we're on linear dodge, the fill, by reducing the fill, it ever so slightly takes the flare away from the shadows first. So it just kind of makes it look a bit more realistic than removing the whole flare with the opacity slider. And this is where it all comes down to personal preference. So we can just amend each layer as we go along. So drop the fill on the core to about there. And then on the glow, not there, on the opacity, drop that. So we get a nice, relatively realistic looking flare. And then we hide the group. And then we can move it around the image and we'll put it where we want to be, about there. And if you also think this effect is still a touch too strong, on the group, we can lower the opacity of the group. So we can just set it to around about, around about there. And there we go. There is our finished flare. Now, you can finish here, or you can add the, the, the additional bits of lens flare, which I've added in here. Now to do this, you can search on the internet for um, some lens flares. So I, I have a lens flare saved, so let me just go and get that. Sorry about that, I had to cut the tutorial while I went and grabbed my flare photo. Which here is my flare photo. Now to move this flare photo into our main, our main photo, click on our move tool and just drag it across to our main image and let go. And it will create of a version of our lens flare on its own layer, which we shall call lens flare. Lens flare. So, so now we can move it to roughly where we want to and then hit Command T again for free transform. And then we can rotate it and resize it to whichever size we think looks best. I mean, this all comes down to personal preference. I mean, you may not want to have this lens flare on your images. But I just think it adds a little bit more extra realism to the flare. So just resize it to whichever size you want. I think there looks good. And hit the tick. Now at the moment, the whole image is showing. We don't want that. We only really want the lighter parts of this flare to show. So to get around this, we can change our layer blending mode from normal to screen. And the screen blending mode will only bring through the lighter part of the image which as this isn't the best lens flare photo in the world we're still showing a bit of flare that we don't want. Now to get round this we can use a layer mask to remove the areas of the flare that we don't want. So if we go down, if we have our layer selected and hit our layer mask button with a black brush we can paint away the areas that we don't want. So just zoom in a little bit closer here just delete away what we don't want. And there we go, and that looks good. So, now at the moment, these lens flares are a bit too strong. They're a bit too sharp for the image. So, what we can do, we can click on our image, and we should go up to Filter, Blur, and then Gaussian Blur. And then we can choose a relatively small blur. We don't want to go too massive with the blur, because if you go too big, you won't see the flare at all. So we're going to want to choose around about 13, 14 pixels blur. There we go, that looks good. So hit OK. So now you can see the before and after with the blur. Makes it just that look a bit more realistic. 
Now once again, these are still a bit too strong and to get round this we can just drop the opacity of this layer just to make it blend in a bit more with our flare we've already created. And there we go. I mean, this all comes down to personal preference. I mean, you may, as I said, you may not want to have these lens flare options or you may have a better stock image to use. But there we go. That is our flare created. So if we just shift click these together and then hit Command G to group them, we can see our before and the after. And that, guys, is it. I mean, I hope you like this tutorial. I mean, if you have any comments or suggestions how to improve it, please let me know in the comments below. And then if you have any other tutorials that you'd like me to create, please let me know in the comments below. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was very handy. And I shall see you on the next one. Thank you and goodbye.